What is up everyone? It's the Wise Bubbler here and today I'm going to show you how to trigger Google Cloud functions using a single API key. Um, and the way we're going to do that is using an API gateway, which is essentially just a router. It essentially just gets the request that you send and sends and runs the resource in Google Cloud that you need to run. In our case, it's a Google Cloud function. And so this is like a really good way to do it. And it also has some good analytics. So the API gateway here is, you can see there's like analytics and we're gonna run a function like this. And you can see I have here it all set up in Postman and I just click send and it returns, supposed to return, uh, hello world. Uh, should be quicker once it starts up. But yeah, it should return hello world. And now I'm gonna jump in to see how we can do it from scratch. So the first things we're gonna do is go to functions on our Google Cloud um, console. If you don't have an account, just create one and just search functions and then click cloud functions. And then we're gonna create a new function and the function, make sure it's first gen over here and then call it what you want. In this case, I'm gonna call it test three for YouTube. This is my third attempt for making this video. So that's why I'm calling it that. Um, then keep it at HTTP and then click require authentication, require HTTPS and click save and then click next. Um, over here, you can type in the code you want to run in this function. And again, a cloud function is just essentially a block of code that runs in the cloud. Um, so write your function here and then click deploy. It'll take a few minutes to deploy. So in the meantime, we're gonna start setting up our API gateway. Um, so API Gateway is a different Google Cloud service that essentially, again, is just a router. It's a gateway. It takes in an HTTP request and sends it essentially to the resource you need in Google Cloud. In our case, this cloud function. So you can see it's deploying over here. Um, and in the meantime, so let's start by creating our API Gateway. So to create the API Gateway, you need to create a file that actually defines what the API gateway does. So this file is in YAML format and you don't need to know what that is. I'm gonna walk through it quickly, but essentially YAML is like JSON. It's just a language, a very simple language like JSON um, that defines, just has a correct syntax for defining like what's the name of the API? Um, what is it, What cloud function is it routing to? What's the endpoint? What type of security does it have? And you just create that file and then upload it to create your API gateway. Um, in the description, I have a link where you can buy access to like a pre-built file, um, plus all the endpoints I'm gonna use in Bubble, but you can also just follow along in this video and copy it. So to start creating that file, we're gonna go to Replit. If you don't know what Replit is, just type replit.com and then click create an account and then click create over here. And over here, we're gonna type in YAML. Um, we don't actually have to necessarily do this, but for simplicity, then create REPL and it'll look something like this. Okay, cool. Now we can see we're in this file data.yaml. Now I'm going to rename it because in the last video, I confused two different YAML files and it was a big mess. So I'm going to call this data YouTube three because, and then over here, we don't need the rest of these files just get stick in this YAML file. Okay, over here, um, I have a pre-built template and I'll walk through exactly what it means, but I'm not gonna write it from scratch because I don't know how I did it. <laughs> um, and I had some help with it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna walk through the structure of it. Um, you can see Swagger, Info, don't worry about that. Um, over here, the title. This is where you need to edit the title of the API. Now, this is very important for authentication, so make sure this is unique. Um, I've confused this before and written the same thing like test API twice and it was just extremely confusing and it's hard to change it after. So I'm gonna call this test for YouTube three um, and then API for my YouTube channel and let's call it third attempt. Cool. And then insert description and I put in comments to show you how it works, um, where to enter data. And over here, you can see you don't need to worry about all this. Um, the main thing here is, okay, produces application JSON, API key and header. So we're gonna use an API key to authenticate this API. Now the paths are important. So over here, there's paths. 
Um, and paths essentially indicate um, after a static gateway URL, it tells you which gateway function, gateway which function to call. So this is essentially the path. So there's like a gateway, it has a base URL, which is like Google Cloud, whatever, .com, and then it's gonna be slash. And then whatever you put here, you can define um, what you wanna put here. I'm gonna put here YouTube test third. Um, and then when you call that endpoint, you're defining now which Google Cloud resource, in our case, which cloud function you're calling. So you can have five different paths here calling five different um, Google Cloud function and all that under the same API gateway. Now, in most cases, don't need to worry about this. You just need to name the path. It's not a big deal. Call it whatever you want. Um, and then you can call this test call third attempt. Um, and then operation ID post use of test third, um, because this is my third attempt and I don't want to get confused. Um, you can just enter and these don't matter that much. The main thing is just make sure you know the path um, and the name, the title here is unique. Um, then over here, it's pretty important, um, X Google backend. So which address are we forwarding to? This, this essentially is the URL of the cloud function. So let's go back to the cloud function we created. And over here, we can see it is function is active. If we go to trigger, we can copy this URL and then go back to that YAML file we created and go to address here and just paste in the URL of the cloud function. Okay, cool. And then that's it. Then we're done. The next thing you want to do is go here and click download and this will download it to your computer. Okay, now let's go back to Google Cloud and actually create this gateway. Um, so back to Google Cloud, you can just find the gateway by going to search and API gateway, and you'll be taken to this page. And over here, you want to click create gateway, and you're going to do create new API. And over here, you can call it whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to call it test YouTube test for YouTube three. And then I'm going to call this test YouTube three. So keep in mind that this needs to be digits or hyphen, it must be lowercase must end with a letter or number. Okay, so I made that mistake before. Um, then you want to create new API config. And over here, you want to click browse. And here, you're going to upload the config that you just created. We just created together um, here. Data YouTube 3 YAML. I don't know if you can see that, but this is the file you just downloaded from Replit. Um, and then display name. Let's call this test YouTube 3. Um, and then we're going to use the App Engine default service account. You can create your own service account. Um, doesn't matter right now, but you probably should create your own service account. Maybe in another video, I'll go over that, um, but just use the default for now. And then gateway details, um, let's call this test YouTube three and location. This should be the same location that you use to create your Google cloud function. In my case, us central. Okay. Let's create gateway. And then it's going to take a few minutes. You'll see it running here. It's going to take a few minutes to actually create this gateway. So just sit still until then. All right. And it's created. Okay. We can see here we have this blue check mark, this green check mark. I'm too much on Twitter. Then you can reload the page. <laughs> and over here we have test for YouTube 3. All right. So the next thing you want to do is we need to enable this API gateway and create an API key. So what we're going to do is click here, click enabled API and services, and we're going to create enable APIs and services. And then we're going to search for test. Uh, where are we? Test for YouTube three. Okay, cool. That is the name of the title we put in this file over here, I believe. Yeah, test for YouTube three. Cool. All right, so back to where we are, we're gonna click enable and click okay. Once that's done, it'll take you to this page and then you want to go to credentials and click create API key, create credentials and API key. And it's gonna show you the API key and then click close and then click over here, we created API key four click on that API key, 
scroll to the bottom, click restrict key, and then click and then type in YouTube. This is the name of the API test for YouTube. So we're restricting this API key for this specific resource. And then we're just gonna, let's just copy it and click save. Awesome. All right, once we're done with that, let's now test it out. So let's go back to our API gateway. Click on it. And then let's go to details and, sorry, to gateways. And then let's copy the gateway URL. Well, and click on that and gateway URL. Then let's paste it into Postman. And this is just a simple post request. We put in that URL, but then we need to attach to it that path that we added um, to our API. So let's go back to our YAML file. And if we go back, this is really important. We're going to that paths. And over here, I wrote YouTube test third. Um, all right. And then let's go back to our URL and paste in that path. So you can see it's slash that path that we created. And then let's paste in our API key. Oh boy, did I lose it? Yeah, I lost it. All right, let's get that API key by going back to APIs and services and credentials and API key four. And let's copy that API key, paste it in here. So we're just typing X API key in the header. Let's paste that and send. And there you go, hello world, that worked. Now let's add it in to Bubble from Postman. Okay, so now we're in a Bubble app and we're in the API connector and let's add another API call. And we're gonna call this um, post third YouTube attempt. I don't know if that's the best name actually. Um, probably in an action and we will make it a post request and then let's copy that URL from Postman. And then we're gonna add a header and the header is going to be back to Postman. We're gonna type X API key and then we're gonna put the value, which is the API key that we created. And then let's initialize. Boom, we need to add the content type. Nope, we don't. We just are returning not JSON from the cloud function, okay? So this cloud function is actually returning just text, which is why it's giving me an error. So if I switch this to text, boom, we can see hello world is returned just as text. And this is in JSON format, so it's like, why are you returning not JSON format? So that's how you add it to Bubble. Again, if you want access to this API call and the YAML file, there's a link in the description to buy access. One thing I will say with the YAML file, the spacing is super important. So make sure if you are copying it directly from the YouTube video, you keep an eye out for spacing because it will throw errors immediately if one space is off. Um, you can also have some good videos on YouTube on how YAML works. And if you don't want to suck at Bubble, just subscribe to my channel. That's all you have to do. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.